I found out later that there's a man in Australia who uh, has had terrible symptoms, consistent with lead poisoning, but unbeknownst to him, he didn't know these were symptoms of lead poisoning. And word of our discovery went around the world and through the news media, and he found out about it. How I contracted lead poisoning was um, I was working in the mining industry, in the gold mining industry, and uh, there was a, uh, issues in the laboratory, and I was breathing in the reoxidized lead. I was quite insane. I was going into rages and you know, or crying fits. I used to go into rage and sort of cry afterwards and be remorseful and weeping spells that I couldn't control, and nothing seemed to help. Then, by 1983, I actually started losing my hearing. I suffered for so many years and saw the state of my mental health and physical health decline. Then, quite miraculously, really, an article came out in a newspaper about Beethoven's hair and his symptoms. And I started to cry because I realised that this behaviour, this was me. Lead can go straight into the emotional part of the brain and produce rage attacks, mood swings, periods of sadness, periods of elation. You lose the ability to inhibit the inappropriate outbursts because Andrew knew that he was out of control, but he couldn't stop it. The other mechanism is that lead itself, just by disinhibiting the brain, can engender a more creative state with, I suppose, more rich, complex connections that are normally shut down as we focus on our day-to-day -day activities. I mean, psychologically, Beethoven could have been trying to master his emotional state through the music. I mean, it's a psychological technique is to create something outside of ourselves look at it as a way of trying to understand our own internal state. So an, an attempt at mastery of intense emotional states which were produced by the lead. The guilt and the remorse I have for the way I used to behave, I mean, I can't turn the clock back. It was terrible. I was very, very ashamed of what I did. The sheer irrationality and anger just didn't make sense. I was sort of uh, quite insane. After I started this, this treatment, it just ceased. I started in January, and by February, I had sort of half a rage blow up. Uh, and then I haven't had one since February 1997. That's been one of the, the greatest things of all, is that, yeah, I did something. Woohoo, it's Beethoven. But I actually affected another human being's life, and hopefully for the better. Well, today, I've got the benefit of a hearing aid, which uh, overcomes my deafness. I also have the benefit of drugs, which stabilise my moods, and uh, Beethoven never had the benefit of that. He endured many decades of having to uh, tolerate his own tantrums and irrationality. In some ways, it's a, a living nightmare just having to live with yourself, and uh, I sometimes feel for Beethoven for that. At Beethoven's funeral, the actor Heinrich Unschutz read the following words written by the poet Will Parzer that have a lot of resonance for me. Because he shut himself off from the world, because he shunned feelings, they called him hostile and callous. He withdrew from his fellow men after he had given them everything and had received nothing in return. He remained alone, but until his death, he preserved a human heart for all men, for the whole world. Thus he lived, thus he died, thus will he live for all time. And whenever the power of his works overwhelms you like a coming storm, when your rapture pours out in the midst of a generation yet unborn, then remember this hour and think, we were there when they buried him, and when he died, we wept.